Hi, this is Rick. Thank you for joining me on my YouTube channel, Rick Sorts Watercolor, and welcome to my studio. Today in this short video, I'm going to be demonstrating three different types of washes in watercolor. A flat wash, a gradated wash, and a variegated wash. And uh, if you enjoy the video, be sure to subscribe to my channel if you're not already a subscriber. You can click on the link in the lower right hand corner at any time during the video. And if you enjoy this, be sure to share it and like it. If you want to uh, see more of my videos or learn more about my online instruction, you can click on the links that appear at the end of the video. So we're going to go here to, to my, uh, my studio. And in the first block, I'm demonstrating two different ways to do a flat wash. The, the second block, I'll be working on two different variations of uh, gradated wash. And I'll be doing a variegated wash in the last box. So to do that, we're going to go to this view. So I have my palette. And uh, the first block, we'll slide this over, is going to be a flat wash. So I'm going to take two, two approaches. The first approach, I'm just taking a round wash brush. And I'm going to use a dark value here, a fairly dark value, uh, paint, and add a little bit of water, make it more of a middle value when I put this down. So I'm mixing my paint on my palette. This is a soft brush. My board at the moment is at about a 20 degree angle. So when I apply the paint, the, 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 the gravity is going to be pulling on my wash to bring it down. And I'm going to leave this bead of water, uh, of paint, off my palette down that. Uh, down my paper and to get a nice coating. Like I said, I'm at about a 20 degree angle and so my brush is loaded. My mixture has quite a bit of water in it, but it's still, it's a middle value. So I'm just reloading from my palette. I'm not dipping it, my brush in water. <clears throat> that would change my mixture. And I want to keep this uh, a flat wash. So this is a, I'm just going down the page and you can see that bead of water right there. Just keeping this leading edge wet. So you can see that I've got a nice even uh, uh, coverage of, of with the paint. And uh, I pick up any excess moisture at the bottom to prevent it from backwashing. So I have a nice flat wash there. And I'm gonna give this a quick dry and then we'll move on to the next box. So I've dried this and you can see I've got a nice flat wash, nice even coverage. You don't see any brush strokes in this. It's just a flat wash. And the key to that is keeping a fully loaded brush as I apply that. Now, I'm actually gonna take out uh, what, what uh, props up my board and I'm, I'm now laying it flat. And I'm gonna take a flat brush. This is a half inch flat brush. And first what I'm going to do is I'm going to wet uh, my block with water. So I'm wetting the paper. So now this area is what I consider saturated. It has glossy, it's a glossy uh, reflection of light on it. It has water actually floating on the surface. And now what I'm going to do so I'm going to take my mixture, I'm going to take this half inch flat brush and I'm going to just go over it. Remember this, the paper is wet. And I'm going to come back over it this way. I actually don't use this technique too much. I normally use the first one. Okay, so now, once again, let me dry this. So I've dried this and I prop my board back up and you can see I have two blocks, very similar in value, flat washes, and I'm going to, uh, Peel my my tape up that I have. 
And you can see that I have two clean edges. I got a little bit of a dot there, <clears throat> a few marks, but you can see two flat washes, um, two different techniques. One starting wet on dry at a slight angle, leading the bead of water down. This is what I use most often. And the other one laying my board flat, wetting the paper first, brushing in one direction and brushing in the other direction. So similar result, two different techniques. Now this one is going to be a gradated wash. So I'm going to actually go with about a number eight uh, round brush. And let's see, we'll start a little darker. I'm using a dark blue. This is actually a royal blue. Um, but I'm going to make, uh, I'm going to put a wash here that's going to be gradation of value. So I'm starting out with a dark uh, mixture. I'm going to add a little more water to that as I reload my brush. So I've loaded my brush with a little lighter value. I'm still leading a B, just like I did here. But what's changed is when I'm taking off my palette, a thinner and thinner mixture. Keep adding water on my palette. I don't dip my brush in my water after I go for my palette because I don't know what I have at that point. I, I always, I'll take water in my palette and thin the mixture out there. My palette is my paint bucket. Now this is getting thinner. Now what I will do is I'll go just to plain water and just use plain water. So that's the only time I go from my water bucket to my paper directly is when I just want clear water. So you can see how this now is a gradated wash. It's going from dark to light. Now the next thing I want to do is I want to go, this is gradation of value. Next one I want to do is gradation of color. So I'm going to start with the same wash. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to change my, uh, my color here. I'm going to use a little alizarin crimson. Get a little bit on my palette. And what I'm going to do is uh, start with the, the royal blue that I have. So here, I'm just going royal blue. I'm reloading my brush. Now I'm still royal blue. Now if I want to change that, I'm going to load my brush with the alizarin crimson. So what's changed is, is what I'm loading my brush with. And I'm going to get whatever I have on my palette. Add a little more water to that. So I'm just leading the bead of water down. Now if I want to go back, what changes is I'm going to change my what I'm loading my brush with. Now I'm loading it with a blue again. I'm just leading that bead across. And if I want to go back to the red, or to the alizarin crimson, I can go back to the alizarin crimson. And I can go back to the royal blue if I want. And it's starting to mix on the paper give me kind of a violet. So now what I did here was a gradation of value. I went from dark light to light with the same color. Then here I, I went from gradation of one color to the next and back to the color and back to the color. What changes is just that I'm loading my brush. I'm still working at an angle, still bringing the, the, the mixture down. So I'm going to go ahead and dry this block. So the blocks are dry, and once again, I'm going to take off my, my tape so you can see those blocks. And what's different is the, what I loaded into my brush. So here, I started with a dark value, loading my brush with a dark value mixture. Then I added water to that mixture and loaded it with a lighter value mixture as I went down, so, and then to eventually clear water. So I still led the bead of water down, just like I did in a flat wash. What changes though is now I'm changing what I'm loading into my brush. And then here what changed was the loading of my brush, but instead, instead of a lighter mixture of the blue, I actually changed colors when I loaded my brush. But again, it's the same process as the very first block I did with this flat wash. Leaving a bead of water down, nice coating. Here I'm just changing what I'm loading my brush with. 
So that's a gradated wash. And now I'm going to do a variegated wash. There's times when you have colors um, that may be complementary and may not get along when they mix on your paper and cause a gray or make it look muddy, uh, like in a sunrise sky. Uh, and you don't want those colors to, you want them side by side, but you don't want them to necessarily mix on, on your paper. So a variegated wash is a good approach. So if I was doing a landscape, I might turn a horizontal composition 90 degrees and, and put this wash down for a sky and then turn it back, continue to work on my painting. So I'm going to uh, do a variegated wash here. And I'm going to work with uh, cerulean blue and I'm going to work with uh, an orange. In this case, it's Halloween orange. It doesn't really matter what orange, but and I have some orange and I have two different brushes here so my, my paint doesn't get contaminated as I mix this. Um, but the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to wet uh, the area that I'm going to paint. So I've got a little bit of cerulean blue still in my brush. So I'm going to drop this. I'm taking clear water and I'm wetting uh, the paper. And remember, this is at about a 20 degree angle. So gravity's pulling paint this direction. Now I'm going to take my... Uh, Oops, grab the wrong brush. Let me, let me get a fresh loading of cerulean blue. All right. Sometimes I'll have a cool brush and a warm brush. All right, now I'm gonna take the cerulean blue and I'm gonna to start to paint like I was painting a, a, a sky, you know, sky blue. And then I'm going to take this this orange. I'm going to start over here. And I'm going to take some water. So so what's happening? I'll pick up some of the excess here with a tissue. piece of the brush there. I'm just going to leave that uh, until it's dry. So what's happening now is I have the orange and the blue side by side and if I mix those two, you know, if I take this cerulean blue on my palette and mix it with my orange, eventually I'm going to get a gray. Right? I'm going to get more of a neutral neutral mixture there and it can get muddy if I don't manage that, that, manage that on my paper. But because the paper was wet when I started. Gravity's pulling this down. They're not coming together on the paper. So if I wanted to do a sunrise sky and I could put some red in here or whatever I want to do, I, I would take this approach, I'd dry it and then I'd rotate my, my painting back. So let me dry this and then I'll take the tape off and we can look at all three of these uh, different scenarios. Okay, I've dried this. Uh, let me take my tape off. And what we have is the variegated wash. So let me zoom back out, move this back over. And uh, here's the, the three different approaches. A flat wash, wet on dry, working at an angle. A flat wash, working with uh, a wet, wet uh, a flat board with wetting the paper first and then coming in and brushing my paint two different directions. Here, back to working at an angle, a gradated wash, changing what I'm loading my brush with as I went down. Same process that I used here, but changing what I'm loading my brush with. Here, I didn't change what I loaded my brush with. Here, I mixed, used, loaded my brush with a lighter value of the same color. Here, I loaded my brush with a different color as I brought that bead down. Same process as here, same process as here, but loading my brush differently. Then here, working on, starting with a, a wet page or a wet block at an angle using two different complementary colors that could become muddy, but because gravity's pulling them this way and the page is wet, it's flowing this way, 
the edges kind of join, but they don't they don't come together and start to get uh, muddy. So two different or three different approaches uh, to three different styles of washes here, washes here, and um, it can be useful, you know, knowing these different techniques to get the different behaviors of paint on the paper and the different uh, types of washes. So I hope you enjoyed this. Thanks for watching.